essentially on your Gnosis safe, when you first, when you're unconnected, um, it'll say welcome to Gnosis safe and you can either create a new safe or you can add an existing safe and anybody can add a safe. We'll just do Research Guild. You'll notice after a safe has been imported, um, in the top left corner is kind of like the profile of the safe. And this is the address of the safe. And if you make sure not to include the ETH part, um, you should be able to import this safe. You won't be able to um, initiate any transactions, but it's a public safe. It's on chain. Um, and so you can see the details of the safe and the transactions. And we'll kind of go over some of that now. Um, but you can see that the default like landing page for your safe, it will, uh, is your assets. And in this safe, we have, um, 330,000 bank tokens with a USD value. Um, we have no Ethereum. If we go to the Dalation Ships Guild, you can see that we have some USDC here. And this little side carrot is what I use to kind of switch from different safes. But you can see here in our uh, Polygon Safe on Matic, we have some funds in a 8020 bank balancer pool, and so it shows that you know that LP token, um, and it shows the Supermatic that we use to be able to experiment with like streaming funds um, from the multi-sig to somebody's wallet. So you have your assets in the middle um, and on the left you have, you know, the name which you have to write the name of whatever multi-sig that you import into Gnosis. Um, it doesn't automatically import the name, so your name could be different than my name, um, but the address will be the same. It gives us a QR code um, for the smart contract, and you can, pre you know, prefix the smart code with ETH colon and the name, or you can do it without. Um, when you're copying and pasting, you know, if you're copying it with the ETH name in there, you want to make sure that you take it out or it won't read the transaction um, in other applications. Um, and there's always a link to the Ether scan for the contract um, of the safe that you're in. So, in addition to assets, it, ha it has subcategories of coins and collectibles. Oh my gosh, and they're finally showing up. So and up until just recently, it your Gnosis didn't do a good job on Polygon of showing your, your NFTs. And, and you look in that safe, it always shows the NFTs. Uh, as an asset so it shows the two open sea collectibles um, from purchase comics um, and it's sh so the poly scan or the ether scan of whatever blockchain that you're on it will always show the assets that are in your gnosis safe um, or your app even if it doesn't at the time show it for whatever reason. Um, a lot of this stuff is in development. <laughs> um, 
the other things on the sidebar, essentially you have your assets and you have your transactions of your assets and it will show a history and a kind of description and the, the amount if it required bank and the time. One of the things, the transactions that's done frequently is the swapping of owners. You can see the details of this transaction. Um, you swap out the old owner for the new owner. You know, there's always a transaction hash on Etherscan. You know, the, the time and, you know, even advanced details. There's a gas fee. Uh, the research ETH mainnet Gnosis is a four of seven safe, um, which means it needs four signers out of the seven to sign a transaction. Um, but once four signers have signed a transaction, then somebody can execute the transaction and they incur a gas fee and then they can get reimbursed um, for that gas fee from the grants committee. There's a form to fill out. Lastly, kind of just the other like real simple uh, details of your Gnosis safe is that you do have an address book. So when you're sending people bank or sending banks to a specific, you know, ETH address, um, you can name all those people so that, you know, as you reuse the ETH address, right, it should match up with the name. Um, we'll skip over apps for right now, but essentially when you go to Balancer or SushiSwap um, or some other app, maybe a game, and you connect your MetaMask, you're using that app. And when you're trying to connect a Gnosis safe to that app, um, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes there's just a couple little extra steps that you have to take to be able to do that because natively that app is wanting to read your MetaMask. Um, the last details about the safe is just that there is a contract version um, right, it's on the ETH mainnet. There are owners associated with it, and so there's always a list of their owners, and you can edit to the uh, to the right of each owner. Uh, there's buttons to edit the owner, to swap the owner, um, or to remove the owner. And these will initiate transactions that you have to sign, except for the edit owner, because you're just changing your name. Um, the, the only policy for this safe is that there are four out of seven owners needed to sign it.